Hello, my name is Richard Cleveland and I teach in the Counselor Education Program here at Georgia Southern in the College of Education. And much of my research involves mindfulness. And so I thought I'd take a few minutes and talk to you about mindfulness. Um, one, what mindfulness is, why you might want to try mindfulness, and what walking or hiking might look like as a way to experience mindfulness. Okay. So first of all, what's mindfulness? Mindfulness has been described as paying attention in a particular way. Maybe you've already heard about mindfulness, maybe you've seen apps, books, podcasts, all sorts of things that are uh, stating that they'll help you get a mindful state of being or a mindful calm. Why do I need help with my calm, with my being, with my paying attention? All of this, um, I think about recently traveling with my family and we were traveling in a new part of the state and as we were coming close to our destination, I reached over and I turned off the radio and started looking for the address. As soon as I did that, our son asked, hey, why'd you turn off the tunes? And so I said, oh, you know, haven't been here before. I really want to be able to pay attention and find the destination. As soon as I said that, um, maybe not surprising, he said, well, if you're looking and driving with your eyes, why need the music off? And, and so I think about that example as how we have so much bombarding our minds at any given moment, so many different stimuli that are vying for our attention. Um, Ellen Langer out of Harvard uses the analogy of a bank account and talks about when we are paying attention, we are actually paying out of that reserve of our attention. And that as we keep getting more and more elements, more and more pieces of our world asking and wanting and grabbing onto our attention, it's harder for us to give any or a sizable amount to uh, what we wanna focus on. So just like I turned off the car radio, mindfulness is a way that I can choose to reduce the noise. I can, uh, tone down the demands on my attention. Mindfulness is described as purposeful, non-judgmental, present moment awareness. Let's look at these four pieces, okay? Purposeful. Mindfulness requires intentional action on my part. Uh, maybe this is setting aside a time, maybe setting aside a place. Mindfulness definitely requires that I set aside cognitive energies and I use those. Non-judgmental. I like to think about this as turning off my autopilot. Um, the times when I'm able to sit still and be quiet, it seems like the first thing that happens is a flood of thoughts come rushing in and I immediately start deciding, okay, which ones are good, which ones are bad, which ones are things that I should be thinking or shouldn't be thinking. In mindfulness, I I'm not ignoring these thoughts or emotions. Instead, I'm noticing them, I'm recognizing them, but I'm not dwelling on them or judging myself for feeling them. Present moment. So building off that idea of non-judgmental, mindfulness is concerned with noticing the present moment. Not remembering the stupid thing I said yesterday and I should have said differently. Not thinking about my to-do list for tomorrow and what I'm going to need to change and start getting ready tonight. Um, instead, mindfulness is my state of being right here, right now. My physical sensations and my mental and emotional sensations in the present moment. So again, how am I doing in the here and now? And awareness, the final piece of mindfulness is the most noticeable piece, the awareness. The previous three aspects are what characterize my awareness. I believe uh, that those are what allow me to be fully aware. Uh, the incredible part of mindfulness is that oftentimes when I am able to still myself and practice these elements, my awareness goes way beyond just my physical state. It may start with my breathing, it may start with closed eyes, uh, but as I continue to practice mindfulness, my awareness expands beyond myself. Okay, so why even try mindfulness? What's all the hype? Um, well, as I mentioned, I believe a big part of this is experiencing a time of contemplativeness, okay? Another benefit is the physical and emotional calm that can be experienced when practicing mindfulness. I believe the greatest benefit from practicing mindfulness is experiencing peace. Now, when I say peace here, I mean calm, or balance. Mindfulness is not a magical panacea. And in fact, for most people, starting to practice mindfulness can be quite challenging because when I choose to quiet myself, when I choose to turn off all of that noise in my life and sit there with my sensations, with my thoughts, with my feelings, I might not like, uh, I might not like all that quiet. It might be really new and difficult to have all of that noise, the text alerts, the device vibrations, all of that suddenly gone and it's suddenly quiet. So again, mindfulness is not calming or peaceful because it makes bad thoughts go away. It's not ignoring things. Instead, mindfulness is practicing to slow down, to calm and to notice, to, to take stock of my body, my mind and my heart in this present moment. All right, there's the what and the why. 
Now let's talk about actually trying mindfulness. And for us, mindfulness when walking or hiking. And I wanna go through what this might be like and slow down my cadence and talking when we're going through this. There are many ways that we can practice or experience mindfulness. Maybe you're familiar with yoga, meditation, deep breathing, or some other fashion out there. The important thing to remember is that these different forms aren't special or magical in and of themselves. It's about how well they do or don't help me to stay true to those four pieces of the mindfulness definition. So I mentioned mindful hiking or mindful walking. What might this look like? Okay, for me, first, this means going for a walk or going for a hike alone and not focusing on reaching any sort of destination. Definitely not focusing on trying to reach a certain heart rate or get in a certain number of steps or being purposeful. Next, I want to practice non-judgmental present moment awareness. I like to start by drawing my attention to my breathing. Is my breathing regular? Am I breathing through my nose, through my mouth? I might even start with standing still and focusing on my in-breath and on my out-breath. Breathing in and out. Only then beginning to walk. As I'm walking, I like to focus on my footfalls. With each step, noticing the sounds I make listening for distinctions between not only the, ver the various types of ground, but also the different ways that I step. So far, I've brought attention to my breathing, my walking, and to the sounds that I'm creating with each step. While still attending to these, next I might gently direct my attention to a tree, reaching out and feeling the texture of the bark how coarse it is, smooth, dry. Again, at all moments, really trying to remain non-judgmental, present moment focused. When I notice my attention beginning to perseverate or to go somewhere else or being held to one reoccurring thought or sensation, that's when I might pause Remind myself this is okay, this is a part of mindfulness, and draw my attention back to my breathing. Sort of like a reset. And a final piece of my practice that I like to do is to come to rest in the trail and practice being open in my awareness. Usually we only do this at specific scenic areas or designated picture-taking spots. And yes, I may come across a very serene view and choose to stand and be open in my awareness. But I also like to choose random or less likely spots as well. These always seem to surprise me as my autopilot judgment m might have determined that these weren't worth stopping for. Or this is just a boring place in the trail. But after a few moments, I quickly begin to notice details, sounds, sensations, thoughts, which I might have passed right by. The beautiful thing about practicing mindfulness through a hike, through a walk, is that when I quiet my body, quieting my body as part of my whole self, oftentimes that is when the wilderness all around me comes more to life. And then there is much, much more for me to become aware of. So there you go. I hope this was helpful for you in learning more about mindfulness, um, how it can be beneficial, and what mindful hiking or walking can even look like. I encourage you to try this, even if it's not out in the wilderness. Maybe uh, you might even just start with muting the sound off of this and watching the outdoor part, okay? Whatever you choose, I hope you stay healthy, I hope you stay safe, and you continue to live as a resilient Georgia Southern Eagle. Thanks.